In the original spanning tree, a port needs to work through the blocking, listening, learning, and forwarding states. All up, it would take about 50 seconds for a port to come online, which is far too long in a modern network. RSTP addresses this issue by changing the states to discarding, learning, and forwarding. The old blocking and listening states have effectively been combined into discarding. But the big change is how all these work. They don't have timers anymore. Instead, they have a negotiation procedure. As before, when an interface first comes up, it is in the blocking state, so a loop can't form before it's detected. For our example, imagine that we're adding a new switch into the network. There's no loop here, but spanning tree doesn't know that yet. The switches will start sending BPDUs, which starts a negotiation process called a sync. This gets a bit complicated, but basically they use new fields in the BPDU message to share information. They negotiate the link to the root bridge first and enable that link. At this point, the downstream links are still blocked. One switch will propose which links should be forwarding and which should be blocked. The sync process then completes for downstream switches and the appropriate links transition to forwarding. Now, I have very much oversimplified this process. The point to remember is that RSTP takes a much more active approach in bringing up the interfaces. There are no timers, which means interfaces come up faster. This approach means RSTP can respond very quickly to changes in the network. But don't take my word for it, let's see it in action. First, we're changing our flavor of spanning tree to PVST. This is one of Cisco's versions of the original spanning tree standard. I'll get to why this is called PVST later. Next, I'm enabling spanning tree general and event debugging. So in case you've forgotten or you haven't come across debugs yet, debugging is getting extra logging information from our switch so we can use it for troubleshooting. I have a separate video on that if you want a review on how that works. If we're on the console port, which I am, we will see all debug logs in real time. However, if you're connecting to a switch with SSH or Telnet, you need to run the terminal monitor command first. What this does is sends the logs directly to your terminal session so you can see them. You'll notice that we're already getting a few logs as there's always something happening. I'm now gonna bring up a new link on gigabit02. Notice that we can see the interface going through the various states. First listening, then learning, and finally forwarding. As you can see, it takes too long for a port to transition to forwarding. I'm now gonna shut that port down so we can try it in RSTP. Of course, we'll get a few more debug logs along the way. Now we'll change to RSTP mode. This in itself will generate a lot of logs. We'll just wait until they're finished. Okay, that looks stable now. And now I'm going to bring up gig zero slash two again. And that's done. See how much faster that was with RSTP? We can go back and look at a few of the steps that it took, such as selecting designated as the port role and sending the RSTP proposal. Of course, you should always remember to disable any debugs when you're done troubleshooting. Got another quiz question for you, but I don't think you'll find this one very hard.